develop innovative uh, ideas and principled leaders uh, that transform global business and society. And all of these words are actually very carefully chosen. Um, and I'd especially highlight in this particular uh, mission statement um, the notion of innovation. This is a research university and a research institution, uh, but also University of Miami's roadmap for the next century. The University of Miami um, is not yet 100 years old. It will be 100 years old in a couple of years, and we've developed a roadmap for uh, the next century at the university level under the leadership of President Julio Frank, the uh, former health minister of Mexico, uh, who is our president at the University of Miami. And the, these are the five areas uh, that are highlighted in that uh, roadmap. Of course, there's a vast amount of detail associated with each of these, but I think it's especially important for us as uh, a business school to take note of the fact that um, there's a heavy emphasis on mission-driven research, uh, on education for life, so the research mission and the teaching mission, uh, but also on hemispheric leadership. And perhaps this is an area where the University of Miami fulfilled uh, its potential and promise uh, to be a major force for thought leadership uh, in the hemisphere. And that is something that we're taking very seriously at the business school in alignment with uh, the objectives of the president. Uh, we also have uh, important objectives around our health system and making sure that's world-class as well as, of course, constantly improving our administrative uh, efficiency and effectiveness. Now, it may be of interest to you that we, with a group of uh, faculty as a community of scholars, uh, might potentially develop interdisciplinary preeminence uh, in the context of our research mission. We're here breaking down the silos of the customary departments. Of course, we have an accounting department, a finance department, uh, a marketing department, and so on. But you'll see that none of these reflect those traditional departmental silos. Uh, what we're saying here is that there are five areas where we think uh, we can make a difference in terms of thought leadership worldwide. Uh, one is in the area of behavioral decision making, where, for example, we have a very strong behavioral finance department. We have consumer behaviorists who are very strong in our marketing department. Of course, we have human behavior specialists in our management department. And secondly, uh, we're focusing very heavily on business analytics. Uh, our MS uh, in business analytics is our largest enrollment program now at Miami Business School. We have a very strong uh, capability in this area which is, of course, very relevant to uh, current uh, business imperatives. Thirdly, global operations. This is a global school. We have something like 30 nationalities represented on our faculty. Uh, it's always been very, very outward-looking, uh, internationally-looking uh, school in its uh, orientation and in its student and faculty body. Uh, fourthly, governance and leadership, another area of uh, potential excellence. And then finally, we're launching a very strong initiative uh, given the existential threat to Miami uh, from ocean rise. We're launching uh, a very strong initiative in sustainable business this year, which will include an MS in sustainable business to be launched next August that will be the first uh, and only STEM certified MS in sustainability in the United States. Uh, and that is achievable because we have the asset at our school uh, of the companion school, the Rosensteel School of, ap of uh, Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, uh, which is, I would say, one of the top ten in its field. And we are combining forces with them to make sure that our students in our sustainable business program have the science basis uh, the hard science basis that the Rosensteel faculty can deliver, uh, as well as the management uh, capability that our school can deliver. So we think we're going to be putting forward in the market a very, very strong product. Um, in addition to these five interdisciplinary clusters, we're looking also at entrepreneurship as a major 
uh, commitment. This is something that every business school has to uh, uh, be very much focused on. Uh, we in Miami are among the uh, strongest cities in the United States in terms of, in terms of startups. Uh, and we uh, have to contribute and participate in and want to contribute and participate in that ecosystem in our, in our region. Uh, health management, uh, for obvious reasons, is a very strong arena for us. We've had um, the healthcare uh, management uh, MBA for 40 years. Uh, this is the 40th anniversary of the executive MBA in healthcare management at our school one of the oldest in the uh, world, and um, obviously, uh, given the age profile of the population in our region, uh, the whole health ecosystem is something that's very important. And finally, real estate uh, has been a strong tradition, um, a strong area of excellence for our school, and we continue to make uh, sure that that is going to be remaining. So just a few uh, items that uh, I hope will, particularly for the alumni in the room, encourage you that uh, your school is doing well. Um, that first of all, instead of being flat or down in terms of enrollments, as you may have read in the Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times, every MBA program is either flat or down. Our MBA program was up 12% in enrollments this year. Uh, in fact, all of our graduate degree program enrollments combined were 12% higher than last year. Um, and that is partly a reflection of uh, higher quality and more applications, but it's also a reflection of the fact that we're converting a higher percentage of the offers uh, that we make to students. In other words, our yield in graduate programs increased from 43 to 49%. Uh, there's also significant increase in demand for undergraduate business majors here within the university. Uh, even though the university total undergraduate population is relatively stable, uh, the proportion of those undergraduates who are demanding uh, more business education uh, and want to do a business major is on the rise. Uh, we have uh, launched this year a corporate associates program. Um, that is a program which uh, corporations can engage in to uh, become closer to the school. Um, within eight months of launching this program, we already have 49 companies that are paying uh, an annual subscription of five figures at some level or another uh, to be a part of this program. Uh, so this is a very, very important way of our reconnecting uh, the school with the corporate community that desperately wants us to serve them. Uh, our executive education arena has uh, already taken off. Uh, we have uh, some outstanding new executive education client companies, uh, Bacardi, HBO, and Telemundo, to name a few. Uh, and we have also been very successful this past year hiring outstanding faculty from other schools, um, notably uh, Wharton, Columbia, London Business School, Ohio State, Indiana. Uh, we are hiring from the very best PhD programs and the very best schools in the world. Uh, and finally, uh, we have the benefit of having within our school 45,000 alumni around the world. That's an incredibly uh, large network. It's not um, 90,000, which Harvard Business School would claim, uh, but 45,000 is a very high and healthy number of alumni around the world, uh, particularly in the U.S., of course, but also very heavily in Latin America. Um, our overall strategy is really to focus on three things in terms of our uh, fiscal stewardship. One is to improve the operational excellence of what we do, the second is to increase further our graduate program enrollments, and third is to boost our executive education activity. Uh, I want to just uh, call out a few people who have been uh, very important in terms of shaping uh, the events today and the next three days. 
Uh, Paul Chagru, I think, is not with us today, but he is uh, the former dean of uh, Miami Business School, uh, was dean for, I think, almost uh, 15 years, and uh, many alumni remember him fondly, and uh, he, he has served uh, tremendously on our behalf as chair of our planning committee for the 70th anniversary. Uh, secondly, uh, many of you will know and all of you will have already met or seen Blanca. Please, please stand up, Blanca. Uh, Blanca, and Bla Blanca and her team uh, have just been tremendous in organizing the, uh, the arrangements for this event and the logistics. Uh, we also have uh, Roni Shear here who is um, with us. She is Director of Alumni and Corporate Engagement. And uh, over, the, over the next uh, three days, we're going to have, I think, almost 600 alumni coming back for one or more of the four events that we have planned. And that's really a tremendous testimony to our alumni relations department. Uh, finally, I just want to acknowledge uh, the two uh, gentlemen, colleagues of mine, who have been uh, the planners for this particular day and who have uh, secured the wonderful lineup of speakers whom we're going to enjoy. Uh, Henrik Kronquist, who is the uh, Vice Dean for uh, Faculty and Research, um, and uh, Professor Manuel Santos, who is our Distinguished Professor of uh, Economics. So th there are many, many other people who are uh, going to be uh, um, uh, hopefully not feeling left out, but feeling acknowledged at least uh, by virtue of the fact that uh, these folks have been recognized. We have a great team of people here, and uh, any opportunity you have to thank uh, all of our staff members uh, for their work, please, please do so. Uh, so just to uh, summarize, uh, we're celebrating here the, uh, the 70th anniversary of the full-time MBA program. Uh, the 40th anniversary of the Executive MBA in Healthcare, the 20th M uh, MBA in Espanol anniversary. Uh, I think uh, I said 600. I think we're closer to 600 now than 525 alumni coming back over the next three days, more than we've ever seen before at Miami Business School. And uh, now I'd like to um, uh, just highlight the program for the day and introduce uh, uh, Paulo Leme, former head of uh, Goldman Sachs for Brazil, and uh, Paulo has recently uh, joined our faculty, has been already just tremendously helpful in reconnecting and connecting our school with uh, uh, practice and public policy makers and international finance at the highest levels. And Paolo, I think, is going to handle uh, all of the introductions and the speaker commentaries for the morning sessions. So, Paolo, thank you for being with us, and please step forward.